This is the 1880s steam drilling engine. It was machined using a small lathe and milling machine from PMR casting set model 1B1. It is a one inch bore dual acting horizontal steam engine. The following photo is a picture of the unmachined castings and materials that you get in the 1B1 casting set. Here is a view of the 1880s steam drilling engine from above. And all in all there are 18 castings in the PMR 1880s steam drilling engine unmachined castings and materials set. I will point out the castings to you. There's the cylinder head, the cylinder, the inner cylinder head, the frame, the cylinder packing gland. A packing gland compresses a material around a shaft so that it doesn't leak when it slides back and forth. There's the follower here. There is a connecting rod, a crankshaft. The crankshaft is machined from a single casting. There are the bearings for the crankshaft, the flywheel, the eccentric is machined from plain metal. There is an eccentric strap which is machined from castings. A valve rod which is threaded from plain brass rod. There is a valve chest, a valve chest packing gland, valve chest cover. I think I've gotten all the castings there. Back here you can see a displacement oiler. When steam gets in there, some of it turns to water and condenses. and It makes droplets of water that fall to the bottom and float up a little bit of oil, which then goes with the steam into the cylinder and lubricates the engine. Now the lubricant has to be a partially animal oil, like whale oil something that mixes with water or steam, otherwise the water will prevent the lubricant from touching the metal of the cylinder and it won't lubricate. But with this particular oil, it will mix with the steam, it will mix with water, and it will touch the cylinder and lubricate. It's called steam cylinder oil. In the center here we see the PMR horizontal boiler. Part set BLR-2 is a five tube horizontal boiler and following that will be a photo of the unmachined parts and supplies provided in the part set. Now mine was a little different. I bought mine ten years ago and those U-shaped channels that you see already formed came to me as flat metal. So I had to build a metal break and learn how to bend sheet metal and accurately bend those sides. Fortunately, in the new sets that you can buy now, those already come formed and bent. So that's the PM Research Horizontal Boiler Part Set BLR-2. On the right here we see the PMR boiler feed pump, that's casting set BFP-1C. Again, these are unmachined castings. All of these have been made from casting sets from PMR, which needed to be drilled and machined and bored and threaded and uh, turned from a casting set with materials into a finished part. So. Uh, We'll have a look at the whole thing to put together as a steam system. At the rear you see uh, gas tanks which are camping gas used to fire modified camp stove burners that are used to heat the boiler and to produce the steam. 
All the plumbing and pipes that you see were machined from solid. The pipes were solid brass rod with the center drilled out to make pipe on the lathe and with the ends threaded on the lathe. The valves were machined from rough castings that are solid and drilled out and the parts made to create a valve. All the plumbing was made in this shop. Here we have a shot of the entire steam system including the PMR 1880s drilling engine, the PMR horizontal boiler, and the PMR feed pump. In addition, a water supply can, a steam return can, and the two tanks of butane propane camping stove mix that provide fuel for the modified camp stove burners that heat the boiler. Here you can see I've fired up the boiler. You can see the blue flame coming from the head of a camp stove. The camp stove has a fuel which is a mixture of propane and butane that you buy at the camping store. And the burner is the central part of a flyweight single burner camp stove which I've removed the supports for the pan and whatnot which were made of heavy wire and just kept the center and attached a little plate to make it stand up straight. They were quite inexpensive. The whole uh, camp stove with shipping was about eleven dollars uh, for each of them and I'm using two of them. I'm going to let the first one heat it up a bit to cause a draft before I light the rear burner otherwise the rear burner will not have enough air. I think now it might be time enough to see if I've got enough draft there to uh, light up the back burner. Is it going to pop? Yeah, it lit. Now once it's lit, I'll adjust the, uh, the gas down so it won't have too much gas back there. You want to be very careful not to let the flame go out because you don't want to have a boiler furnace full of unburned gas, which when you let it, then it will have a blowout. It will blow those doors open. It will go pop. But it's hard for you to see, but I can see that the other burner is burning and it'll take a while. Uh, I can probably at some point close some of these doors. But I like to keep an eye on the flame and it'll take perhaps 10 minutes for the boiler to heat up and have enough steam to run the engine. So I'll sign off for a minute and we'll get back to it when the boiler has enough steam, have enough head to uh, power the engine. The boiler is producing steam now and in a minute we'll be able to start the PMR 1880s drilling engine. The drilling engine is a dual acting horizontal engine. There is a valve which keeps switching which side of the piston gets steam pressure to cause it to move back and forth and to crank and turn the flywheel. So let's see if we can start the engine and we'll run it for a little while. I'll take it off of top dead center. And away we go. Let me put a little bit of load on it. They could actually drive something. I've got a little bit of power there. That's put another load on it.
The PMR 1880's drilling engine does not recycle the steam the way I have it. I am not capturing the water from the spent steam and returning it to the boiler through a pressured pump which can pump in water into the high pressure boiler. So instead we simply vent the steam into this can which catches any water that's coming with it. Take a look at the steam coming out of that steam return can. I suppose I could leave that back into the water supply and it would make the water going in warmer and would not take as long to heat up the water when adding water. So I could take that steam return and return that water and steam into the water supply tank and therefore pump warmer water back into the boiler. Over to the right we have the water supply can that has water that's provided to the pump which can, which can pump water at pressure into the high pressure boiler. And the boiler probably gives you about 40 pounds per square inch of pressure, not too high pressure coming out of this boiler. I can see by the water gauge over here that I'm running a little bit low on water in the boiler. So I'm going to pump in some water using the pump here and it will cool the water, possibly slow things down a bit. Okay, I've got the water level back up quite a bit now. And we'll have to wait for that water to cook a little bit and make steam. And slowing down the edge, you can hear the engine going slowly. The gauge is showing me about half full. I like the tank to be about three quarters full so that water won't boil off and give me water through my steam lines instead of steam through the steam lines. But I'm going to pump in a little bit more water. You can hear it going slowly there. Now the water that I've added to the boiler is becoming steam and the engine is picking up speed again. There you can see the engine is back up to its normal speed again. And the boiler is running about half full of water at this point. I'll add water one more time. and the cold water reduces the head of steam. Okay, we'll just let that run for a while. You can watch it. You can see how the eccentric is working the valve rod and keep switching which side of the piston is getting pressure.
I'm burning more gas and putting more heat into the boiler and causing the engine to run faster.